Now to three other stories you need to know right now. The Senate just passed two spending bills to prevent a government shutdown. The president is expected to sign them by tomorrow to keep the government running through the holiday. The bills boost spending for the military, scrap key taxes to fund the Affordable Care Act, and they raise the legal age in the U.S. to buy tobacco to 21. The vote comes in the height of the nationwide vaping epidemic. President Trump is also signing off on permanent federal funding for historic black colleges and universities. The FUTURE Act sets aside more than $250 million a year for HBCUs and other minority-serving institutions. It also simplifies the federal student aid program so the Education Department can get information directly from the IRS rather than forcing families to provide that same information to both agencies. Facebook will not allow misleading census ads anymore. Today, the company announced it's going to stop advertisements that portray the census as useless or meaningless or that encourage people not to participate in it. Anyone who violates this policy will also be removed from those social media platforms. Facebook will begin enforcing this policy starting in January. The new policy comes after Facebook came under fire for not fact-checking political ads on its site. The backlash has led Twitter to stop accepting all political ads. We're looking at radar and it confirms what you're seeing out there. No rain in our area at all. We have plenty of clear sky. The sun just went down, but we still have some light there on the horizon. As you look at the entire southeast, really many areas are dry. We see some rain, though, down in southern Florida and we'll eventually see more rain coming in from the Gulf of Mexico as we move into the weekend. So here's the timeline of what we're watching as we go through the next few days. Tomorrow morning, it's going to be a chilly start. Temperatures are going to be right around freezing at 32 in the afternoon. Just a few clouds mixing in with the sunshine with temperatures in the mid 50s and then Friday evening, a cool night. We're back to the 40s. The changes start to come in on Saturday, not a washout, just a few showers Saturday with uh, temperatures in the lower 50s. And then Sunday is the day with the rainy conditions, chilly, kind of breezy, high temperatures only in the upper 40s. Stay with us. We'll let you know when that rain moves out and what to expect for Christmas and Christmas Eve. Chris, thank you. Next year, when Georgia Bulldog fans head to South Carolina, they will be able to enjoy some adult beverages while they cheer on the dogs. The University of South Carolina has become the latest SEC school to allow alcohol sales at its athletic events. Jennifer Bellamy joins us with a look at how similar changes are impacting other schools in the conference and where UGA stands on this, Jennifer. Yes, Cheryl, the change at South Carolina applies to all sports and will begin next year with men's and women's basketball games and will follow with football and baseball. But South Carolina isn't the first SEC school to allow beer and wine sales and others are reporting big dollars from similar changes. Sports lovers get ready to add another school to the list of those in the SEC that you will see beer and wine sales at next season. Those cheering on their teams at the University of South Carolina athletic events will soon be able to do so with a cold beer or a cup of wine in hand. It'll cost fans about $8 a beer, and the school expects the move will bring in seven-figure earnings. Last May, SEC chancellors and school presidents voted to allow schools to decide if they wanted to sell beer and wine during games. LSU reported more than $2.2 million in alcohol sales this football season, with more than 280,000 alcoholic drinks sold in public areas of Tiger Stadium. But so far, the University of Georgia has said no, saying in June they would maintain at this time the current UGA policy, which prohibits the sale of alcoholic beverages and non-premium seating areas of our athletic facilities, meaning those who pay top dollar for special seating do have the option of adult drinks. So here's how the other SEC schools' policies stand right now. Yes to some type of athletic alcohol sales at Arkansas, Florida, which announced a pilot program at men's basketball games this year, LSU, Mississippi, Missouri, Tennessee, Texas A&M, and Vanderbilt. But it's still a no at Alabama, Auburn, Kentucky, Mississippi State, and Georgia. So what about the dogs? Will they ever change their minds? Well, that's not clear right now, but the university did say it would conduct an annual review to see if any changes need to be made in the future. We will, of course, let you know if Georgia ever flips the script on this one.